here to talk about scraping by on just enough, running IT while perpetually understaffed. Everybody's understaffed, I know that. You can never have enough support. But this is particularly for solo people in, in a single person environment or a small IT staff, certainly less than five. Um, and uh, we, we can all commiserate together uh, because we, we just don't have enough support. I think it's probably physically impossible. A staff of 25 might be adequate um, to support technology, but nobody will ever get there, I don't think. Um, a little bit myself, I do not have a JD. Uh, upon graduating college, I worked as a paralegal in New York City and Washington, D.C. And trying to get out of law, consequently, I went to the library school, got an MLS, an LIS. Are careful to keep the information in there. And uh, again, I tried to get out of law, but then got a job at Ohio Northern University as the information technology librarian. <clears throat> and uh, a little bit about where I come from. We are a small, private law school on a rural campus in Northwest Ohio. And central administration um, exists for offices of financial aid, the registrar, and there is a central computing department on campus. Um, my title is information technology librarian. I'm therefore expected to do two jobs, like many people are. Um, I'm expected to be an expert in electronic legal research. That's the librarian part. And I'm also responsible for management and implementation of all information technology initiatives in the College of Law and the Law Library. <laughs> what does that really mean? The computer guy. No matter what I do, I'm the computer guy. I'm the guru. I've had deity ascribed to me. Falsely, I never asked for that. I quickly. Offensive to any real deity, I'm sure. Um, so I, I covered the faculty machines, the staff machines, buy new equipment, put the software on, hopefully keep it running well, um, and maintain the law school website. This presentation is based on my vast experience of four years at Ohio Northern, and uh, I hope to give you some suggestions that might help you and provide some perspective um, to keep your head above water as you manage technology with a small staff. So the first thing you want to do when you're thrown into an environment like that is keep your head above water. Learn what it takes to do to keep your head above water, to keep things running, and to keep most people satisfied. Um, for example, anything that makes your job easier is going to make you happy. If you're not using, for example, a ghost imaging software, um, you're really hurting yourself. You know, within minutes, you can have a whole new image cloning this image onto a, a PC that's giving you trouble. The, the problem is, you know, can you wipe the whole thing clean? Here's a big difference between saving the dean's financial projections for the next hundred years versus somebody who probably feels even more strongly about saving their Thomas Kincaid screensaver. Um, to help keep your head above water, the first step you should do is maintain a hardware inventory. Make sure you know what you have and where it is. Personally, I keep a spreadsheet that has specifications for each machine that I'm responsible for, um, who has it, how big the hard drive is, how much RAM it has, does it have a zip drive, do they have a printer. Um, it's all good to have that in one place. And uh, I include the serial number because, again, making your job easier, saving time. When you call tech support, having the serial number before they ask for it is pretty helpful. Um, I also keep the year that the equipment was acquired, and it helps you when you're planning. At a moment's note, notice, um, somebody will ask you, when am I getting a new computer? Well, depending on your rotation schedule, you can just, when you see when they got one, just add three years or four years in our case and tell them that's when you're going to get a new computer. Um, I also keep track of the MAC addresses on the laptops, the circulating laptops, because sometimes they circulate permanently. And uh, nobody has been this helpful to me yet, but if you, keep, if you maintain that physical address and somebody is helpful enough to log in on the network, then you can run a search on the log. And um, It hasn't happened for us yet. We, two of them have gone irretrievably, but uh, maybe someday we'll have somebody kind enough to help us track it. Um, and if you don't want to make a clean sweep when you first get there, um, you know, gather the information as the new equipment comes in, start maintaining it, or um, you know, if you go fix something, gather the information then. So as, as I said, know what you have, know where it is. Same for software. Maintain a 
a software inventory, a file where you have all your licensing, how many users you can have, because some administrator someday will come and want to know at a moment's notice what you have, and they really care about these things because it involves money and legal issues. Um, they get paid to worry about that. Um, licensing the full-time, uh, a full semester course in itself, so I'm not going to go into that, but knowing what you have and knowing where to find that information is, is key. Once you uh, know what you have, you can start to become a manager. Um, if you're at this session, I'm assuming that you're responsible for managing technology in one way or another. And so, part of my definition of management um, is figuring out who can do work for me. Good management is who can do work for me well. Um, in order to, to do that, you have to figure out who in your community knows how to do things. Um, who can help? Develop a skills inventory. Find out who, what, what faculty, what students can help you, um, and who at the university, who else there is that can... Uh, an obvious thing is uh, your campus computing uh, department. <coughs> they, they can be a valuable resource. Um, but unfortunately, you're probably the tech support, as is my case, uh, because they too are woefully inadequately supported. Um, on our campus, the technicians are still to this day wiping off and cleaning up the I love you virus around campus. So they, they too, I mean, they're, they're wonderful, dedicated, hardworking, smart people. Uh, but the more you do on your campus, the more you do in your department, um, the more favors you're really doing for them. That's a little secret that I learned from one of them that actually uh, shared that with me. Um, so you can cash in on those favors once in a while. When I got there, the law school was maintaining a web server and the content. I cashed in on a favor because uh, it, it was wonderful when it ran by itself, but then when there were problems, that in itself became a full-time job, administering the website. So now the university department hosts the uh, content on their servers, and we still have responsibility for the, the content and control of the content. Um, the more people that know how to do things, they're your helpers too. You try to identify them. Um, you know, Jan Gabrielson yesterday talked, uh, her, her session was called Teaching Them to Fish. I really liked her partner, Joe uh, Provenzano, his corollary to that. Teach them to fish, buy them the boat, stop the lake with trout. <laughs> That's your goal, to do that. Um, you may or may not achieve it. But the more people that know how to do things, they too can, uh, can help you. Trying to identify faculty disciples um, and evangelists. Uh, nothing can convince other faculty that something is good than a colleague. For some reason, they don't trust me, but they will trust a colleague. Um, we have a professor who is a wonderful evangelist. He's using WebCT and other technology in his classroom. And uh, he has said that using technology, I am covering more material per semester, and the students are performing better on exams. That's his message to his colleagues, and he helps in tremendous ways. He's happy to be. I think some people are, are technology wannabes, guru wannabes, and, and he's, he's thrilled to do training uh, with them to get them up. And I think it's important in this discipleship evangelism to uh, provide training. Training workshops are a wonderful thing. I strongly believe in them, and they're, they're, they're necessary. You have to do them. I mean, it's really hard to watch in the library tens of thousands of dollars going down the drain for a subscription that nobody's using or knows about, um, or a software license for your educational software. <coughs> it's a big waste. You have to do trainings. But I know you've all had this experience. They're notoriously hard to get anyone to attend. Nobody comes. My experience from working in law firms and in the law school is that learning is best appreciated during the time of a trial. When they need the information, when they need the knowledge, that's when they'll come to ask for it. And so there, for some reason, there's a resistance to group learning or learning when there's no immediate need. So you just need to recognize this and try to work around it and look for those teachable moments one-on-one -on -one, whenever they occur. Identify them and make the most of them. Let's go now to the same course that was supposed to remedy.
Another way to get help is through student workers. This past year, for the first three years, I was doing mostly tech support, because it is a full-time job, even for a small department like ours. It has 22 faculty, probably as many secretaries, and the student computer lab. That is a full-time job. Um, I've been doing more library things now, and you know, somebody's got to go if you don't want to have burnout. We had the wonderful opportunity to hire student workers, and uh, if you can get authorization to do that, that's wonderful. Uh, being in a law school, you're at an advantage. I don't know why, that there's some stature among the undergraduates where if they're working for the graduate school or a graduate professional program, that they're elevated in some sense among their peers. It's something I've noticed. Um, and they're always anxious to show that they actually know something outside of their department. Um, Eric is going to talk, Eric Young is going to talk about it. Cooperatives outside of your community, your, your local community. Um, so you've gone to keeping your head above water, beginning to be a manager. Now here, this is the third part. Thinking ahead, how to be a manager, uh, a professional. Um, what you need to do is write a technology plan. The more things you have in writing, the better. Um, policies are very important because the very fact that even if there's a draft that hasn't been approved by your dean yet, it will still carry some weight. You know, it must be true because I've read it on the internet. Somebody put it in print. Well, even more so for a policy drafted by your department. Um, and that, it'll, it'll really help you. You want to specify things like your equipment replacement schedule. Um, is it going to be three years or four years? Memorialize it in writing and people will know. I mean, you want to have information out there that people can rely on um, and not be confused. Who stops the toner? Well, memorialize it in your policy. It doesn't matter who does it, but as long as it's consistent, if your policy is consistent um, across the board, you'll avoid confusion and, and frustration. Um, you'll want to cover things like what happens if unsupported software is loaded onto the school's computer. Um, if it's memorialized in the policy, you'll have an easier time extricating yourself and perhaps even ghosting over the financial information that wants to be retrieved. It should have been backed up to begin with anyway, but in another place, but that's all part of education too and training. Teachable moments are never more stressful than <laughs> when there is a crisis. Um, um, your policy should also address another big issue, how much support, if any, you'll provide for faculty home computers and for student computers. Um, you will be asked, and uh, I strongly recommend none. I strongly recommend you put it in the policy, because once you do it, if you do it once, it's